eagle eyes and flashing across the sky. Like a swift arrow whizzing from a bow. Like a mighty cannonball, he seems to fly. You'll hear about him everywhere you go. The time will come when everyone will know the name of Champion. taking anybody to no federal prison. He's got the key on him. Well, let's ride. Try for the border, so we'll fool them and head further west. We can knock off that bank at Wagon Mound. I got a better idea, Lance. It's nearer, and that's so risky. Yeah, what's that? A long time ago, you told me about your sister. Changed her name to Winters, didn't she? If your idea's got anything to do with Belle, forget it. She turned against me and my brothers when we got in trouble with the law, and she ain't gonna change. Yeah, but there's something new. She's marrying money. A Jasper called Trem Holt, who struck it rich in oil. recognize you without your chin piece and that fancy outfit fooled me. Yeah, well, I don't blame you. See, in the city, they told me that now that I got rich off of the oil off my ranch, that I ought to look like a man of means. Well, you do, Tram. You coming back to stay? I hope so. <clears throat> I'm going to get married. Well, congratulations. Sure, Mr. Holt. Well, don't look at me. I ain't the one that's marrying him. <clears throat> This is her, Miss Bill Winters. Well, howdy, ma'am, and welcome. Hello. Trem's told me all about you, of course. And you too, Ricky. Yeah, and about how if it hadn't been for you two, I might never have found that oil on my ranch. I might have even been in jail. Well, that's all over now. Why don't you and Miss Winters come in the house? Sure, come on in. Well, you see, I've kind of bribed the driver to come here out of his way, and I don't want to keep him waiting. We can drive you into town if you want to go later. Sure, we'll get your baggage unloaded. No, oh, I'll take care of that. I've been so anxious to meet all of you since Trem told me about what you did for him. Anybody would have done it. There you are, my boy. Thanks. Showing off with all that money. Now, listen, lady. It could be that you're just jealous. Jealous? <laughs> Without your money, you don't amount to nothing. You find out. 
The money is what she's marrying you for. But that's not true. <clears throat> Don't let it bother you. If you wasn't a female, I'd... And after me and Bella are married, we're going to buy a small ranch in these parts and settle down. Yippee! Tram, when is the wedding going to be and where? Well, Sandy, you and Ricky are my best friends, and I kind of hoped that you wouldn't mind uh, having it take place here. And would you be our best man? I'd be delighted. Good. How soon can you fix it? Well, that all depends on the parson. I'll have to see him later. Well, that sure is a load off my chest. You'll find me at the hotel, and Belle is going to put up at the Witter Jones. Uncle Sandy, why can't they stay here? We got plenty of room. Why, sure. Well, thank you very much, Mr. North. It's very kind of you, but... But you'll stay. As best man, I insist. What? That must be Tram. You know about him? Well, I certainly do. Tram hasn't been exactly silent about you and your animals. <laughs> do you like horses? Oh, it's more than that. I've ridden them and loved them all my life. I like this better than any other present I ever got. It's Champ. Mr. Holt carved it for me. Oh, my, he must be a beautiful animal. Come on outside and see for yourself, Miss Waters. All right. Sandy, do you think you and Rick and Belle are going to get along good? From what I've seen of Miss Winters, Tram, anybody would get along with her. Sandy, I'm sure glad to hear you say that. She's a real fine girl. Wow, well, I am very pleased to meet you, Champ. Quiet, Ribble. It's Champ's turn to get attention. Oh, Ricky, you're so fortunate to have animals like Champ and Rebel as friends. And they are friends, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Just like people. Say, with Champ liking you so much. What? Nothing. I mean, I can't tell you right now. I'm going to fix a surprise for you. Oh, you don't have to do that. I want to, Miss Bill. I'll tell you what. You take a little walk and look around. I've got some things to do. <laughs> All right, if you insist. <laughs> Winners. Come on, Champ. Sandy, all I want to live for now is to make Belle happy. I've got a feeling she never has been. What makes you think so? She never has said anything. But I can tell. Well, then you can both make up for it now. I guess I better head for town and see if I can't make a deal with the parson. Oh, say, Sandy. While you're over there, <coughs> would you stop in at Wells Fargo and see if my special present for Belle has arrived? Well, sure. Be glad to. It's a diamond necklace. Sent all the way to Chicago for it. Sam, I think Belle's a pretty lucky gal. You find my darling sister? No, but I found out where she is. Sandy North's place. Not too far. Ah, that's good. Make it easier to invite her up here. I also found out that we'd better get across the border pronto. Every law officer for a hundred miles around is looking for you on account of that marshal. Hmm. That looks like I'll have to separate Bell from a good chunk of money. Get me some paper. Talk to him, Champ. A 
what Ricky's surprise is going to be. Well, I can't either, but it's got four legs, but it ain't an elephant. <laughs> Don't let her peek, Mr. Holt. Here we come. Come on. Now you can open your eyes. Oh, Ricky, she's beautiful. Oh, can I really have her as if she were my very own? Well, she is yours, isn't she, Champ? <laughs> Champ, say yes. Good boy. Want to go for a ride now? Well, yes, but first I want to say thank you, Ricky. Oh, it's fun doing things for people like, well, like you. <laughs> Everything all right with the mayor? Wonderful. How about that parson? Well, he can't make it tomorrow, so I set it up for 3.30 Friday. I don't like to be kept waiting. Well, it can't be helped. The parson's burying the U.S. Marshal from Rock Bend tomorrow. He got killed when Lance Ward escaped. And murdering Ward. Coldest blood killers in the West. Well, it's only a matter of time until Lance is in jail for good, like his brothers. You want to go for a ride now, Miss Bell? Oh, no, dear, not right now. Maybe tomorrow. Don't you feel good, sweetheart? I'm all right. It's just we had such a long ride on that stage, and I'm very tired. Well, you better rest today. You can ride tomorrow. Sure. I'll settle up the mare first thing, and then I'll get Champ, and we'll go for a real ride. Thanks, Ricky. Now, don't you worry about me. Did you come by the Wells Fargo? Yeah, the necklace isn't here yet. Maybe tomorrow. Well, it better come before the wedding. If it don't, I'll make him pay me back my $15,000. Thousand. That's what it cost. Nothing too good for Bell. a good sister to me or Ed and Jack. I'm giving you a chance to make up for it. Lance, I did everything I could to keep you boys from getting into trouble. Yeah? Well, when we did get in trouble, you should have stood by us. I did, and you know it. Till I realized you didn't want my help. Well, I do now, sis. I need money, and you're marrying a rich husband. I'll never ask Trim for a penny to help you. Never? Well, how did he like it if he found out that your name ain't Winters, that your sister to the Ward brothers? Rather than have that, I'll tell him myself. Well, you're kind of reckless, ain't you? Something could happen to Trim. You wouldn't... What wouldn't I? Well, what I said still goes. But I won't ask Trim for the money. I've got a little bit myself. I don't care whose it is as long as it's enough and quick. Well, I can't get it till tomorrow. If you try any tricks... Well, don't you try any. Don't forget I was raised with outlaws. I've learned a few lessons myself. Oh, 
It's something personal. Well, maybe I could help you. Yes, you can. If you'll please not say anything to Mr. Holt or your uncle about this. Well, sure, but... I know it seems strange that I should be crying when I should be so happy about the wedding and all, but... Well, you just have to trust me. Everything's going to work out all right. Okay, Miss Bell. I won't say a word. But remember, I'll help all I can. <sighs> Thanks, Ricky. Now, let's go home. for a thousand dollars at any Wells Fargo office, Miss Winters. You want all of it? Yes, if you please. All right. That's right here. You must be fixing to get Trem a pretty good surprise for your wedding day. Not that he needs anything that money can buy. You know Trem? Yes, known him for years. He used to be pretty honored. Oh, <laughs> but a nice fellow never lived. That's exactly why I'm marrying him. And I'd like you to come to the wedding this afternoon. Well, it'd be my pleasure. $1,000. Oh, a package came today on the noon stage from Chicago for Trem. Do you want to take it? I guess I might as well. All right. I got it right here. Yeah, here we are. Now, if you'll sign these two forms for me, we'll be all set. I imagine this is coming to you anyway. I guess I'd better hurry along. Yeah, so you'll be late for your wedding. <laughs> Here, Lance. And if you try to go straight, I'll do everything I can to help you. A measly thousand dollars. Well, it's all I've got. It ain't all Trem Holt's got. You'll never touch a penny of his money. You ain't going nowhere. Not even to your own wedding if you don't listen to reason. I'm getting worder and worder. Well, being a stranger around here at Trim, she may have just lost her way, but the will find it. But why did she ride alone, not even taking Ricky? And yesterday she rode off by herself, too. Howdy, bridegroom. Howdy, Sandy. Hello, Charlie. And your girlfriend invited me to the wedding. When did you see Belle? Well, I gave her that package that came for you from Chicago. You mean she rode into town? Well, sure. It was her, wasn't it? Sandy. Something's awful wrong. She must have got in some kind of trouble. Uncle Sandy, I've got to talk to you. About what? It's something important, very important. All right. Excuse us, Mr. Holt. It's something personal. Quite a strange to me. She hasn't showed up yet, and the Parsons due in a minute. Sure, funny. She was all right when I saw her. She could hardly stop crying, but she made me promise not to tell. But now I think we ought to look around where I met her. Ricky, saddle my horse. Come on, Rebel. Trim, Ricky and I are going out to have a look around. We won't be long. She was right around here, Uncle Sandy. We better separate and circle around.
this, I'm just blame mean enough to spoil your wedding, even if I don't get anything out of it. Oh, Jim, you stay here. Tucson, go out and shut up that broom tail. Quiet down. What's the matter with you? Snooping around, son. Come right inside. Let me go! Let me go! Ricky! Miss Winters. Well, you got the wrong name, boy. It's Ward, same as mine. I'm her brother. Are you Lance Ward? Lance, you're not going to do anything to this boy. Well, why should I? Might like to keep him around for company for you, though. Make yourself at home, Ricky. I don't care about myself anymore, but if you'll let the boy go, I'll, I'll do what you said. How? Well, there's a package under my saddle. It's a wedding present. It must be very valuable. Well, let's have a look. You will let Ricky go? Well, sure. Along with you. As soon as me and the boys get across the border. Watch him, Tucson. Ricky, you tell Tram that I meant every word I ever said to him. Well, aren't you going back, Miss Witters? Miss Ward, Ricky. We got our hands kind of full, but I'd sure like to know what happened. You just caught yourself in Lance Ward, that's what. And I'm not going back with you. Ricky can explain. She is going back, Uncle Sandy. She's got to. I'm very sorry, Mr. Holt. I hope everything comes out all right. Well, I reckon there ain't much to come out. I've lost my bride, now it looks like I've lost Sandy and Ricky, too. <laughs> Bell, sweetheart! <laughs> are you ready to go, Mrs. Holt? Anytime you are, Mr. Holt. You know, there's just one thing I never will understand. What's that? Why this wife of mine was worried about being one of the wards. It was her I wanted to marry, not her brother's. <laughs>
lightning and flash across the sky. Like the swiftest arrow whizzing from a bow. Like a mighty cannonball, he seems to fly. You'll hear about him everywhere you go. 